Hello everyone, my name is Devin Neal. This is a, a winter course for data structures and analysis of algorithms. So I want to go ahead and start and say this is going to be a fairly time constrained class in terms of the actual broad topics we'll cover in the course. I still want to try and cover everything that I can, but obviously it's not going to be as in depth as it would be during even a summer semester because that would be two months as opposed to just basically one month. But it is still possible to get through pretty much the crux of everything in the course that I'd like to go through and that I typically go through when I teach this course. Um, definitely start with some linear based data structures, move on to some nonlinear ones, and then I don't know if we'll have time to really get to any algorithm based stuff, but um, that's covered in other courses. It's not too bad. Now, this class is. It, it's in C++, but it's not a C++ class, if that makes sense. So the goal of this class is not to teach C++, uh, it is to teach data structures, but I will try to do my best to do a refresher aspect of some of the more advanced topics in C++, the syntax and stuff. I'll try to point some de decent um, online references I'm going to do that throughout the semester regardless because there's some really, really good resources online that I even I use to this day just to refresh myself on various aspects and then just some really good stuff and documentation online in general. And no matter how familiar you are with programming, it is always good to have some backup reference online, especially if you're not 100% familiar, which let's be honest, um, the more you learn, the more you're going to understand that you're not going to necessarily be familiar with every aspect of a language as long as you understand the core constructs of that language and brushing yourself back up on a few things or maybe have to go back to have some online cheat sheet for some syntax. So like some pointer based syntax is always awkward in C++. Uh, template sim sim syntax is just a nightmare. I hate it. But I'll be honest. Um, C++ is not my favorite language. I don't, it's not because it's difficult, but it's because it's complex and it, it more needlessly complex sometimes. But I still like the language. It is one of the major programming languages that I use. And by that I mean like major time that I actually take using it. So I think C++, um, C Sharp, Python are three of the top languages I use on a day to day basis. I'm picking up a few different languages here now. like. Uh, D, Rust, a few other things, but no matter how familiar I get with these languages, I'm never going to be at a point that's like, yeah, I can just go and program in this 100% without having to have some reference. So understanding what references you like, would like to use throughout the course of uh, just programming in general is always really good. I have a few that I go to on a daily basis almost. And yes, Stack Overflow is definitely going to be one of them just because getting, seeing the questions that other people ask can help actually help you put the questions that you want to ask in better perspective because sometimes you have, say, a topic that you'd like to know better, but you don't know exactly how to ask the question or word it. And then you go online and see someone else done it, and it just gives you a bit more perspective. So stuff like that, just as a kind of like a introduction to C++ as a whole, and just programming in general, that that's just kind of how things work, or at least how I think things should work. There's never a point where you should feel, well, let me uh, paraphrase that, or rephrase that. Yes, there are points where you should feel comfortable in a programming language, where you should be able to pick it up on any day and program in it. I don't think there's ever a point where you should be familiar enough where you feel like you understand every aspect of it. And that's a little bit of a pessimistic viewpoint, but that's just kind of me in general. I think it's generally pretty good to keep yourself in like frame of mind that like no matter how good you are at something. One, you can always be better at it, and two, it's perfectly fine to not be 100% proficient at something. Just because you don't have like some prodigal understanding of something doesn't mean you're bad at it. And I think that's a good frame of mind to have going through programming, because there's a lot of times where it's just going to be 
awful some days. So, and this this course can um can definitely exemplify that, and some of the later courses after data structures as well. So just because you're struggling through something to understand some aspect of programming does not mean that you're bad at programming. It just means that you're going through the regular day-to-day -day, uh, basis of going through a trade. So just, I guess, point that out, put that out there. Now, without further ado, what is the point of data structures? This is actually a very contentious um, question because there's a lot of different takeaways after people take this course. Some people take it as advanced C++, which that's not what it's supposed to be, that's what it can be because you're going through more of the object-oriented approach of C++, going through a lot more classes, dynamic memory, pointers, stuff like that. So yes, to a degree this is an advanced programming course. You will actually interface with a lot more high-level C++ stuff, which is where a lot of people dislike C++'s language. So if you ever go online and saw people like, I don't like C++, a lot of it's because of this. There's some merit there, and then there's a lot of people who are just like, I don't like the difficult parts of C++, which to, to, to each their own. I think they're fine for the most part. It does take some un time to understand it, so if it doesn't come naturally. That's, that's kind of normal, honestly, but I digress. The whole point of data structures at its core is, and I'm not being a smart ass saying this, it's, it's learning how to structure data. It, it is quite literally in the name. So no matter what language you're using, no matter what paradigm of programming you're using, whether it be software-based, firmware-based, hardware-based, um, interpreted languages, compiled languages, any of this, no, uh, no matter what you're doing, at the end of the day, the whole point of programming is manipulation of data. That's the whole point of what we do with programming. That's the whole crux of it. The computer that you're working with, whether that be a full-on desktop, a laptop, a simple microcontroller, um, even an FPGA, CPLD, lower level hardware stuff, at the end of the day, you're telling it to do something with some form of data, whether that be like integer-based data, strings, binary, no matter what it is, at some point you're telling a computer, hey, do something with this data, maybe store it somewhere, move it somewhere else, just do something with it. That's the whole point of it. And for a lot of languages, we have stuff like arrays, we have integers, we have, for C++, we have vectors. Python, we have lists, we have dictionaries, maps, stuff like that. And the whole point of what those well, variables, data structures in general that you've already experienced, all they do is they store data. They do some very specific form of storing and manipulating data. And the point of this class is to develop more abstract data structures, so linked lists, uh, stacks, queues, binary search trees, AVLs, stuff like that. And I think a good perspective to view the course as is that yes, a linked list can almost 100% be replaced by say a C++ vector, a Python list, or something like that. However, a lot of the actual crux of this class is understanding how we got to where we are today. Because we didn't always have vectors, we didn't always have Python as a class. Didn't have a lot of these things. But everything you can do in this class, you can do with more of a modern uh, formal data structure in a language. But understanding how those various defined data structures work as opposed to more a self-derived abstract data structure works is a good show that you understand how we can manipulate data in more of our own self-defined ways. Because not every single task that we want to do can be elegantly done with the given defaults of a language. Um, C++ is pretty good at doing it if you use some of the external libraries and stuff, but a good example is C. As a basic language, you don't have the more formally done vectors and stuff like that. That's in the standard library now for C++, 
They're very, very useful. I use them all the time. I don't know if I've done C++ programming in the past decade where I didn't actually utilize vectors to some degree. So I'm a pretty big fan of them. But with C, that doesn't exist. So deriving your own self-defined data structure where you have complete knowledge of how the data needs to be manipulated, have it working in a way that you defined is very, very critical. And can be very, very beneficial in instances for C++, it's object-oriented. With C, it's not object-oriented, but they're still pretty portable. You can set up a header file, uh, some structs and stuff like that, and you can basically implement them in any program you do in the future. So yes, for C, it's not an object-oriented language, but we kind of derived all object-oriented languages from C, so we can do the same thing, but I, I digress. For C++ specifically, since we're doing classes and stuff like that, they're very, very portable. And that is a critical feature of object-oriented pro programming is the portability. If, if you write decent classes that lend themselves being portable, one of the big problems with object-oriented programming is it can get needlessly complex very quickly. And you'll see a lot of people online who dislike object-oriented programming quite a lot for that reason. But at the end of the day, I don't think there's any one paradigm that is superior. I think that good programming, no matter the paradigm, has merit and deserves to exist. Even Java. And that hurts me a little bit to say. But I digress. For all those that like Java, um, I will be unapologetically bashing it um, for the rest of my life. So, to each their own. There's some merit to Java, though, I'll, I'll be honest. It's not terrible. There are worse. But, at the end of the day, the whole point of this course is to learn how to manipulate data, why we want to manipulate data in specific ways, because, yes, a lot of the things that we'll do in this course, you can do, say, the latter stuff, we might be able to implement the exact same program successfully with a linked list but we might want to use a binary search tree in general and we'll learn why and a lot of that is going to come down to efficiency because the latter part of the title of this course is analysis of algorithms and the whole point of that is to learn what types of data structures lend themselves to specific computational problems why some are better suited to specific algorithms in general and just kind of why we care about that i touch on this in discrete structures as well I think I touch on it a little bit in computer organization, but not as much. I do use one of the data structures here in computer organization, that being a stack, as it lends itself to low level assembly programming quite well. But I digress. Here, I have some stuff set up, but basically, there's a lot of people here that have done, apparently, I, I, I quit zero. And it is a point of seeing if you're familiar with C++ in general, because that gives me a good idea of who knows what in the course and doesn't know what. I think most people have already had C++. That's not always guaranteed because of transfer students and stuff like that. And I've had a lot of people who only had Python experience, have only had like Visual Basic experience, Java experience, stuff like that. And so I will cater to that category of people if need be. For the most part, I think I can pick up on pointers and classes and object-oriented programming in general. I think we should be fine. If you do have any stru like struggles with the syntax of C++ or some of the very basics of C++, just let me know in the Discord server or in an email and I'll point you in the right direction and uh, I won't let you get too far behind. All right. But Again, I digress. Whole point of a lot of this course and a few other courses that I teach is basically manipulating data, a lot of be storing it in hard drives, passing it through RAM, writing your own custom PCB to actually transfer data, a lot of different things. If you've ever done like digital devices and stuff like that, I've used a breadboard, microprocessors, all that good stuff. At the end of the day, 
All of it is manipulation of data and memory. And that brings me to the other point of dynamic memory and classes. That'll be where we start in kind of like, it's still pre-data structures, but understanding pointers and understanding object-oriented programming and classes in general. It's going to be critical, so I'm gonna have two different videos leading up to our first actual data structure. And it's just gonna be on pointers, which includes like dynamic memory and then classes, which is just gonna be a very, very simple overview of both of them, um, just to kind of get people caught up, refreshed on that and stuff like that. So dealing with memory, dealing with pointers, doing the classes, all that's going to be pretty crucial. So I'll probably have a quiz one on that due next week, and then we'll start getting to the actual crux of the course around sometime next week. Now, I think the other thing I need to do is, yes, that's about that. So again, this is C++. There is one huge asset of C++ that I'm not a huge fan of, and that is development environment. I will probably have a, a quiz or a program or something that is going to be setting up a development environment, getting a C++ compiler, um, maybe an IDE or something. I need to know that everybody here has some way to work with C++, and if I need to accommodate any of that appropriately. I assume most people here will have had or had, say, Xcode, um, Visual Studio, Qt Creator, or something else. I do have a few IDEs I recommend. I don't use an IDE. Straight up, I do not use an integrated development environment. I primarily just use text editor and the terminal. So if you watch the videos of me going through code throughout the semester, I might be using a completely different environment. The code should still be the same. I will also probably upload, I say probably upload, I'm definitely gonna upload a lot of boilerplate code. You won't be writing the data structures themselves from scratch. If I had a full semester to do that, then I'd probably have that be a thing. But that's less important, understanding how to write the data structure, as opposed to being given a data structure, being told, this is how it works, this is why we use it, and then you can have some way to either extend the functionality of that data structure or to find some way to actually give it merit and use. That is what I want to do through this course, is to explain how they work. And then I want you guys to do something with it. Because yes, I can be told this is how linked lists work, this is how stack works. That's, that's cool, that's great, I know how they work. What do I do with them? That is a question that people come away with data structures a lot of the time they don't know why they learned what they learned. So I wanted to try and answer that question with the assignments, with the exams and stuff like that. So I know this is a winding on to be a much longer video than I wanted it to be, but I want to cover along with the basis that this course can generally have. So I'll stop rambling now and I'll have some of this stuff posted up and I'll go ahead and do recordings on the slides I have and I'll have those posted as well. So. Hope you guys enjoy the class. Hope everything goes well. I hope you guys have a, uh, depending on what holidays you observe, I hope they all go well. So I know here we do Christmas, so Merry Christmas to all those. If you do anything else, then I hope you enjoy them as well. And then also just Happy New Year. I like your stuff. Um, oh, also, if the holidays present issues timing-wise, please tell me. Please let me know. I will do my best to accommodate and work around the schedules because I know that this is one of the busiest times of the year. It will be for me as well, so I'm going to try and get as much as I can before that. But, all that said, I hope you guys enjoy the class. I'll see you later.